What's up everybody? Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now, but one thing you can always count on is a dope ass tutorial coming from me to you every Tuesday. So today is going to be installment number three in my How to Freestyle Better series and I am really excited about the concept that I'm teaching today because it is something that leveled up my footwork super hard. If you have not already seen the first two videos in this series then click back to my profile, scroll down, and definitely find How to Freestyle Better part one aka the dance grid because we are gonna be using some concepts that we learned in that, and we're gonna be building off of them for the one that we're learning today. So without further ado, let's get into it. As you can see behind me, I have laid out yet another grid. It is, instead of a plus sign this time, an X. When you wanna learn new footwork, this is kinda of gonna be your zone. I want you to think of this X, this footwork grid, as your playground. Your main position is going to be in the center of the X, the same way that it was on the plus sign in the dance grid, but this time you are going to be using each point of the X as a guide for directing your footwork movements. So let me just show you a couple of moves that kind of demonstrate how this works. So a lot of moves that you already know, that you've already seen shufflers do, maybe that you've already learned, but you didn't realize have kind of a theoretical foundation, uh, come off of this X. So once you get used to um, kind of visualizing this X in your head as you're coming up with new moves, it can really help you unlock creativity in new ways. There's really not a lot more that I can say except to kind of demonstrate the ways that I used it and a couple of moves that I came up with um, using this grid. So I will also say that this is a grid that's used a lot uh, with shapers, not as much with Melbourne shufflers because the style is just a little bit different, but I think, you know, with any style of dance that's based in footwork, it's good to be able to know how to do things so that you can kind of cherry pick things from different styles that you like that fit your aesthetic and blend them together to create your own style. So whether you are a shaper or a shuffler, uh, you'll get a lot of value out of this either way. So the first kind of foundational uh, move for cutting shapes is called an X out. And this is actually a move that was adapted from a D&B step style, uh, but just kind of changed and adjusted a little bit to suit the more bouncy nature of the cutting shapes footwork movement. Um, you've seen it before, it looks like this. A lot of people call it the Polly Pocket Shuffle. That's not the original name of the move, but you might be more familiar with that term. So for the X out, you can think of it uh, as being kind of like the running man of cutting shapes. But instead of using the X and Y dance grid, you're using the X symbol dance grid. So, you know, your regular running man would look like this, but if you picture it on the X, you're just popping your hips out to meet those top two corners. The main thing that I want you to keep in mind when you're utilizing this dance grid to come up with new moves is just that you're going to be here in the middle and then try to pick two different points and figure out how you can um, create a movement that plays between those two different points or plays those two points off of each other. So here's one example. You guys have seen this move before. A lot of people call it the scissor shuffle. Um, I don't know what the proper name is for it, but it's really easy to learn how to do that move. If you imagine yourself standing in the center, you're going to have one foot pointed towards the top corner, and then you're just going to hop and bring that foot over to the other top corner. Then switch and hop, and switch and hop. So you can see we are standing in the middle. I chose these top two corners. I wanted to find a move that played between them, and this is what I came up with. You can do this exact same movement with the toe pointed to get a totally different look. Hop, switch, hop. Switch, hop, switch, hop. 
let me show you what these look like fast so that you can see it's really the same movement but with the foot either pointed or flexed it looks totally different that is the beauty of the footwork grid it's basically like once you figure out um, one specific movement you can play with different positions of having your foot flexed or pointed you can play with what your arms are doing you can play with the way that your upper body is oriented and after learning just one movement by adjusting other parts of your body you can turn that one move into like three different moves so it's a really good way to add variety to your flow without upping the difficulty factor too much let me show you um, another way, if we want to pick the top two corners of this grid and put them together, uh, we could do a shuffle slide like this. So you can see it's almost the same move that we just did back here, except in this move, my weight is totally on my back leg and I'm hopping and here my weight is almost totally on my front leg with my front leg bent and I'm more sliding. Uh, this is the same grid that I used when I was figuring out my toe taps that I taught um, in my toe taps tutorial. So if you don't remember that move went like this. And I was really just trying to put these two points together in a single move again. And I decided to tap my foot with my toe pointing towards one top corner of the X, tap my toe in the center of the X, and then tap with my toe pointing the other top corner of the X. You could even put the two, move, the two other moves that we just learned together with that move to create your own little combo. You can see it's pretty easy if you're thinking in terms of um, trying to stay between two points. You can come up with a lot of variety for how you can get from point A to point B. You don't just have to use these top two corners. You can also use the back two corners. I basically just started out by drilling like this. Tap, 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 tap. tap. And that kind of helps my uh, muscles figure out what they needed to do in order to tap at those points and once I was able to do that then I came up with some new quote-unquote moves so this is one that you see me do in my flow a lot and this is basically just me t-stepping in place on the center of the X while I'm tapping my feet on the other two backwards points of the X so my heel will go towards one point and my toe on this foot will go towards the opposite point. Then they switch. Boom. 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 So you can see, yes, I'm using my back foot to tap the outer two corners of the X, but at the same time, on my center foot, I am pivoting that to align with the lines of this X at the same time. Um, I'm going to flip around and do this move so you can see it from the back. I think it might be a little bit easier for you to follow along. You could just do exactly what I do. Tap, 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 tap. You can choose two opposite points of the X if you want to um, maybe add in a little bit of a spin to your flow. So um, imagine I'm choosing this point and this point and I want to figure out how to work them both together to create a move. I might do something that looks like this. Bop, 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 bop. So, Obviously you don't have to align all of your movements to the X. That would be
be a little ridiculous. You don't have to think of this as a hard and fast rule for what you have to do to come up with new footwork moves. You know, sometimes it's the blank slate that is the scariest because you just don't know where to start when you want to create something new. So this can give you a little bit of guidance, a little bit of a prompt or a framework to kind of think within to help you um, unlock and engage your own creativity. So now that you hopefully have a pretty good understanding of how this grid works, um, let me show you a quick freestyle where I'm going to try to do all my moves with this X grid in mind and I can just show you a little bit about how that mechanism works. perfect obviously that wasn't like the best freestyle that I've ever done but hopefully it was a good demonstration of how you can do several different moves that have a totally different look but they kind of become cohesive and unified uh, when you are performing them together with that X grid in mind so I know I kind of rushed through that a little bit there might be some things that I think of later that I want to add or if there wasn't something that I explained in great detail that you're still a little bit confused on let me know in the comments below um, and I will make a follow-up video to kind of dive a little bit deeper into this but this is definitely the um, video in my freestyle series that I have been the most excited to share with you guys this is the most sauce I feel like I've ever given away in a tutorial because this is the exact concept that helped me improve Improve my footwork so quickly so yeah I hope that it's helpful to you in the same way that it was to me and I hope that you're able to use this to learn some new shuffling moves while you're stuck inside over the coming weeks and months so tag me in your videos I always love seeing the creative stuff that you guys come up with after you've watched my tutorials it just really warms my heart so I will see you next week and until next time remember don't spread germs, spread love, and happy shuffling. Mwah.